For our third example, we're going to do another function generation synthesis. We're also going to create a four bar linkage. This case, we'll have a 100 millimeter rocker sweeping back and forth 50 degrees. But instead of having equal timing forward and back, we're going to have a time ratio of 1 to 1.33. That is a ratio of our quick stroke to our slow stroke. In the end, we'll specify all our link lengths. Let's talk about this time ratio. In decimal form, our ratio is 0.75, and we can use our time ratio to find our imbalance angle, delta. And on this diagram, we can see delta, and delta is the angle between the toggles of our slow stroke and our quick stroke. And so this angle right here would be our quick stroke, and then this larger angle, the one that's greater than 180, is our slow stroke. And so calculating delta, we get 25.7. We also see this angle here, theta n. This is designer choice. We can choose which angle it is. It has to be greater than delta, so it must be greater than 25.7 for it to be effective. And in our case, we'll choose 50 degrees. The choice of theta n will dictate how long our coupler and crank are, as well as our transmission angle, the angle between our coupler and our rocker, and our coupler and our rocker. We want to try to keep this angle, this acute angle, greater than 40. We could, if we were doing this on pencil and paper, also find out what theta m is. In this case, it's 24.3. But with the easiness of CAD, we actually won't need to calculate that. Let's go take a look in SOLIDWORKS. So I've gone ahead and drawn our rocker positions in its toggles or its limits. And we can see that we have our 50 degree sweep. Each rocker, or the one rocker, is 100 millimeters in length, and we're fixed at this point down here, which would be our rocker pivot. We're going to make a construction line, and this is going to go from the end of the rocker, and it's going to go horizontal. I say horizontal because it's perpendicular to our angle bisector that we have here. That's a vertical right here. Now I'm going to draw another construction line, and that construction line is going to go from this point on our rocker, and it's going to come down to this arbitrary point, and then back up to the same point on the rocker in the far position. This angle between these two lines, or let me say that this line and this line represent the lines of the crank and coupler at both toggles. So I'm going to give it an angle. Let's change this to dimensions. And this angle that I give it here is our imbalance angle, and that's 25.7 degrees. And I'm going to zoom in, and we can start to see that we now have some limitations as to what our linkage will look like. Now what we'll do is add the angle between the horizontal and the rocker in its return position. And as mentioned, we determined or decided 50 degrees. This 50 degrees is, does not have to be the same as the sweep angle. It's just a coincidence in this case. And now that we added it, our sketch is actually fully defined. Let me change this line right here to an actual construction line. So SOLIDWORKS thinks it's a construction line. We should see that right down here at the bottom, it says fully defined. This point is the point of our crank. And this line right here, this construction line, is our crank plus our coupler. And then this line right here is our coupler, which would go a little bit beyond the crank. And then the crank will swing back. And when we're all done, that should be a little bit more evident. But for now, let's go ahead and measure this line right here, 149.3. And then this line right here. Lock it, 80.2. Let's examine what we just measured. This is somewhat similar to what we just had on SOLIDWORKS. So here we see the crank and the coupler when it's fully extended as a straight line and a toggle. And then the coupler, and then with the crank coming back to the crank pivot. And we measured, I guess we measured the longer one first, the crank and the coupler, which we're going to call AC2. That's A plus B. And that's 149, and then AC1, that's from here to here, was 80.2. With a little bit of algebra, we can determine that the crank length is equal to AC2 minus 1, AC1 divided by 2, that's the crank, and then the rocker, that should say coupler, is AC2 plus AC1 divided by 2. And running those numbers, we have values of 34 for the crank and 115 for the coupler. And if we were to take a ratio of our coupler to our crank, we would have 
3.3. So in other words, our coupler is at least three times as long as our crank, which is what we desire. The other thing that we want to watch out for is our transmission angle. So I'll measure between the coupler and the rocker, 40.7. We want to keep it above 40 if possible. It's not a rule, but it's kind of a rule of thumb. So we are above 40. And then we should see by observation that this is greater than 40. But I got the wrong angle. Let's try that again. Between the, between the rocker, the coupler, and the retracted position, we see it's 65. Now the nice thing about having layers is that we have all of our numbers there, but we can go ahead and clean it up with the click of a button. And let's select our new links. Actually, that's not the way to select it. Let's go into new links. And what we're going to do is we are going to draw a link from our pivot. This will be our crank. This will be our rocker. I'm sorry, our coupler. This will be our rocker to the rocker pivot. The rocker will be the same length as what we had drawn, so that'll be 100. We'll make that equal relation. And we will give our crank the length that we had, which is 34.6. That's what we calculated. And our coupler ca calculated that at 115. Let's change these to our... I'm going to put these hidden dims just to keep them separated. And I'm actually going to so it's all together. That's our rocker. This is our ground link. From this point to this point. Let's change those back to the hidden dimensions. So if you ever want to come back to this, instead of seeing all the dimensions, which can be a little bit confusing, we can separate them. Now we'll hide them. And I'll hide the construction lines as well. Hide the construction and hide the hidden dimensions. And finally, let's hide the relationships. Let's see if it works. There's a toggle. Go a little bit beyond it according to the graphics. There's a little bit of rounding in there, but we can see that does our function sweeping 50 degrees, and we have a delta 25.7. And that's that.